Hello, my name's Jay and I speak to you from Iona in the middle of Storm Arwen. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about one of the most important things on any cruise, food. So now that you know that I'm in a storm, if you hear howling or whistling, it's not Dan, but the elements outside. I'm going to talk to you about every possible place on board you can have a snack, afternoon tea, or a full three course meal. If you're more interested in hearing about drinks, go ahead and check out my video on that very topic on our channel. As I'm sitting in my cabin, I'm going to start with room service. The menu is pretty extensive with P&O, much better than you get on the likes of Morella, which covered not much more than a burger, two types of sandwich, an omelette and a pizza. Breakfast room service is complimentary and is included in your cruise fare and includes fruit juices, smoothies, yogurts, cereals, fruit and bakery items such as croissants, muffins, etc. You just simply hang the request for breakfast in bed outside your cabin before you go to sleep. Daytime Bites is the most extensive bit of the room service menu, available between 11am and 11pm daily. You can order baguettes, small plates like chicken liver pate and soup of the day, a three egg omelette with a choice of extras, and you also get larger plates like southern fried chicken and chips, chicken tikka masala and lasagna. You also have some sweet treats like banoffee chocolate cake and New York cheesecake. You can also order nighttime nibbles from 11pm to 7am and this includes 10 inch stone baked pizzas, baguettes and burgers etc. With the exception of breakfast all items are chargeable, however are pretty reasonable. You're looking at £1.50 for a baguette, £4.75 for larger plates like burgers and pizzas, £1 for sides and £2.50 for desserts. Drinks are also charged regardless of whether you have a drinks package so do watch out for that. With restaurants and casual dining venues on board I'm going to start with Epicurean on deck 17 and work our way down through the ship. Epicurean is the most prestigious restaurant on board Iona and is the one that promotes itself as being the venue for fine dining and luxurious surroundings. I never went on Iona, however I went on Britannia and Ventura and we enjoyed the experience. The reason we never went on Iona is because the menu had not changed since our last visit on Ventura and although I was a big fan of the Emmental souffle and the goat's cheese parfait I had, the person I travelled on board Iona with did not find anything on the menu to her taste, so we left it. The Epicurean as a venue also hosts the Eric Lanlard afternoon tea each day which costs £17.50 per head and provides a selection of savouries and sweet pastries. You also get scones crafted and inspired by Eric Lanlard himself. If you're more interested in the three course dining experience that is charged at £28 per person. On deck 16 inside the Sky Dome you'll find Taste 360, a casual dining venue offering grab and go hot food throughout the day such as burgers, hot dogs and pizzas. This is a great place to go if you've been for a swim and need a quick bite to eat. The quality of the food here was really good and the pizza comes very close in quality to the slices served by the pool on Princess Ships. Inside the Sky Dome you'll also find Sundays a poolside ice cream parlour serving a wide range of soft scoop ice creams. Moving aft but staying on deck 16 you'll find the Horizon Court, the buffet restaurant on board Iona. The Horizon Court serves a vast range of dishes throughout the day and well into the night and early hours. Variety was very good, they even served vegetarian bacon, vegetarian sausages and scrambled tofu at breakfast each day. Of an evening, a section of the Horizon Court transforms into the Beach House, a Caribbean and Latin American restaurant. It's a casual dining venue serving dishes like cheesy nachos, sizzling fajitas and chocolate badino. The cover charge is £7.50 per person, however certain dishes like the Fisherman's Hanging Kebab carries an additional charge. Moving down to Deck 8, another casual dining venue is the Keys. It is an alternative to the usual cruise ship buffet and is split into three sections. You have hook, line and vinegar, which serves great fish and chips with all the extras like pickled onions, pickled gherkins, curry sauce and mushy peas. 
You then have Fusion, which is the Asian kitchen section, serving dishes like chicken katsu curry, sweet and sour corn stir fry, and vegetable masaman curry and rice. And lastly, you have the Boardwalk Diner, serving American classics like burgers, hot dogs, and fried chicken. We found that the standard of the food at the Keys was really great, and we hope that this is a venue that will be added to other P&O ships in the future. The next restaurant on Deck 8 is the Olive Grove, one of our favourite restaurants on board Iona. The Olive Grove is a Mediterranean style restaurant serving regional culinary classics such as Greek mezze platter, pizza and pasta. A vast majority of the menu is free of charge, however some dishes like the mussels and the baklava carry an extra supplement charge. People rave about the pizza on Princess ships, but the pizza at the Olive Grove topped it by a long shot. We now arrive at Sindhu. Up until my most recent cruise on Iona, Sindhu was my most favourite restaurant on board P&O ships. I had tried this restaurant on Britannia, Ventura and the late Oriana. The quality of the food across all three ships was consistent, as was the overall dining experience. You used to pay a single supplement charge and that would cover a three course meal. They also used to give you poppadoms, complimentary dishes on behalf of the chef, palate cleansers, after dinner sweet treats, etc. However, that is all gone. They also used to have two totally different menus and alternate between the two during your cruise, which promotes variety and meant you didn't get tired of the food, particularly if you're on a cruise longer than a week. However, that's all gone. They've now introduced a single menu, which is very limited in my view, and you're charged per dish you order. They only had one vegetarian option, which was the Thali plate. Unfortunately, it was very bland and boring, and the Tandoori Lobster Thermidor I had was nice, but it was £15 for half a tail, and you didn't get much meat for your money. For a three course meal, you're now paying more than you did in the past, and regrettably, the overall dining experience has depreciated considerably, now that they've done away with all the extras that they used to offer. Another venue on Deck 8 is Ripples, one of the ice cream parlours on board. You can either have traditional scoops of ice cream in a cone, or you can choose one of their amazing handmade ice creams. They also allow you to create your own ice cream on a stick, referred to as DIY gelato. I was really impressed that we were given an allergen sheet when placing our order, and found that three of the ice creams served are vegan. Heading more forward, you'll find the Keel and Cow, a totally new venue for P&O cruises, serving steaks, rustic pub dishes like pies, sausage and mash, and gourmet burgers. This is a casual dining venue, meaning there is no dress code here, even on formal and celebration nights. They also have a few vegetarian and vegan options on their menu, including the sun-dried tomato and ricotta flatbread and the vegetable balti pan. Both were exceptional. The price of a three course meal roughly ranges between 15 and 30 pounds depending on what you order. It's not just the food that's great at the Keelan Cow, but the stunning views out over the ocean or whatever port you are docked in as you dine. You really do get one of the best views on board here. Jumping down to deck seven, you'll find the Glass House, which has become a favorite venue on many P&O ships. Here, you can eat a variety of small tapas dishes and sample top quality wines selected by British wine expert, Ollie Smith. Three tapas plates cost £8.95 and a dessert trio costs £4.95. If you make your way down to deck six, this is where you'll find the Limelight Club. This is a venue we didn't attend during our cruise. However, I'll tell you a bit about it. It costs £25 per person, and that includes an a la carte three course meal and your entertainment. Performers in the Limelight Club include Gareth Gates, Claire Sweeney and Chesney Hawks. Yes, totally irresistible A-list stars. Joking aside, I've heard only good things about people's experience in the Limelight Club. However, it wasn't for me. Also on deck six at the bottom of the atrium is Vistas, a coffee bar serving Costa coffee beverages and desserts and pastries created and inspired by French patissier Eric Lanlard. They're around £1.75 and are worth every penny. And lastly on deck six, you'll discover the four main dining rooms, Pearl, Aqua, Opal and Coral. All four restaurants serve the same menu each day and you book your table through the My Holiday app. It's super easy and we didn't have to wait any more than 10 minutes for a table. We personally found that this is a much better system compared to the old way of doing things 
where you're allocated a table. If you're not happy with the table size, you have to rush down to find the maitre d' at the start of your cruise. And if you're lucky, you'd get the table you desire. Service is super fast in the main dining rooms, which we liked. However, some may feel that they are more rushed as a result of this new booking system. The food we ate here was great. However, the menu does seem more limited to what it used to be. So that was my review of the dining venues and eateries on board Iona. Hopefully you can see that there is no shortage of choice and options on board this ship. And let me reassure you that the food shown to you was as good as it looked. Avid cruisers will be aware that desserts particularly often look much better than what they taste as they use synthetic cream and gelatine to stop them melting in warmer climates. However, we didn't experience this on Iona. If it looked good, it tasted good. Combining taste, quality and the variety of food on board, I haven't had food quite so good on a cruise since I cruised with Celebrity back in 2016. It is undoubtedly the best food I've had on a P&O ship by far. This really is a ship for foodies, so enjoy it. If you liked this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future cruise content. We'll see you next time.